Welcome back to the Sports Max Zone with news from the Spanish top flight La Liga EA Sports. Match week 36 continued earlier today with one match in particular having ramifications on European football next year as Hitafe hosted Atletico Madrid. We have the highlights. Atletico getting that win there over Hitafe. Prina win. Well, our football correspondent Juan Giorango, he joins us this afternoon to discuss the significance of today's result. Good afternoon, Juan. How are you? Hey, McCoy. How are you? How's everything? I'm doing fine and I'm sure Atletico Madrid are also very, very happy because now they have, of course, ensured that they sealed that fourth position so they have Champions League qualification. Yeah, and, and maybe, just maybe, a couple of things here and there in the last round would end up helping them out, maybe start to fight for third place. But yeah, you're right. The most important thing for Atletico Madrid is that they are now in a third place, or excuse me, in fourth place. They are in Champions League position. And I guess the objective, or I guess the lowest of all objectives, ends up being achieved for Atletico Madrid. If you talk to me, if you ask me personally, I think it's a disappointing season for Atletico Madrid. We saw it today. And at Gore, you say, but why? I mean, they won 3-0. Well, because the potential is there for Atletico Madrid. You see the squad and how deep it is. You see the team and how many, and the stars that they have and what little they were able to do in La Liga to compete with Atlet with uh, Real Madrid, with Barcelona, even with Girona this season as he, they added themselves into the mix. To me, it ends up being a sign of a more disappointing season. Again, that's just my opinion. Yeah, I also think Atletico Madrid did not live up to the expectations of a cost to their fans and based on what they would have been doing in previous seasons because normally when you have conversations about the top three Atletico Madrid tends to find themselves in that discussion a lot more you spoke mm -hmm. about them having individual quality but one what do you think can be attributed to this season that they had because it was not the Atletico Madrid that we're accustomed to it, it, it's, I guess, a case of, of that short blanket that if you pull it up, your feet are uncovered. If you pull it down, it, basically your head's and everything else is uncovered. It, it's a, it was a change of the ethos to a certain extent of Atletico Madrid being an overly defensive team for well over a decade under Diego Simeone. And then all of a sudden when they had to start being more offensive, all of a sudden that def defense ends up being a little bit more vulnerable in very crucial moments. Uh, when they went forward, all of a sudden that back was exposed. When they dropped back, all of a sudden they had barely any front to be able to go and attack. It, it ends up being that you didn't see as balanced an Atletico Madrid side as you did in the in previous years, as competitive. I'm not saying they, were, they weren't fiery, they weren't intense. It's just that they just didn't find that fine-tuned balance that was required for them to be higher up in the table. Yeah, and you know one, as customary at the end of each league season, there are awards to be given out for the most outstanding players and coaches. So La Liga, they released the official shortlist for their major awards. So let's have a look and I'd love to have that discussion. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah let's go. Yeah, let's see. Who do we have here? All right, so this is the table, but we want to see the mm -hmm. right. So for EA Sports Player of the Year nominees, and we have here Jude Bellingham. Mm -hmm. Takefusa Kubo, Antoine Griezmann, Artem Dovbik, Kirion Rodriguez, Robert Lewandowski, Vinicius Jr., Isco, Alex Garcia, and Alexander Solos. So let's start one by, of course, speaking about who you feel should not have been included in this list. I mean, all of them are deserving. I thought you were going to hit me with another question. I thought you were going to say, which one do you think is number one? Or at least give me a podium or something like that. Okay, well, who, fine. Who doesn't? Well, no, who doesn't? I mean, it's difficult. I mean, each and every one has been able to establish their own arguments. I mean, you have one of the top, you have basically five of the top 10 leading goal scorers on there, a couple of the best assist play makers in, in the league. So, so I mean, it, it's, it's unjust to say that none of them deserve to be there. But when it comes to, to, I mean, if you want, if you want me to go and give you a podium, I would probably end up saying Jude Bellingham at number one, Vinicius at number two, uh, Artin Dobek at number three, and uh, I, I just went blank at the other one. Uh, there was a fourth that I was going to mention, and uh, Robert oh, Lewandowski. I'll, I'll leave it at three. 
No, 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 no. Not Lewandowski. No, 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 no. No, but but um uh Alexander Solov. All right. So those are and number four. Right. So those are some really good top four one. Mm -hmm. But my question now will be. How does Jude Bellingham, in your estimation, and I, I, I have a feeling you're going to say a number of goals, but I'm still going to ask you, how does Jude Bellingham edge Vinicius Jr.? And I want to believe it's a very close margin that separates both of them. No, it is a close margin because, I mean, the same argument can be said even with a Ballon d'Or does if Real Madrid ends up winning the, the Champions League. And of course, if, uh, you know, depending on how deep England goes in the Euros, then there's no doubt about it that you'd have to pick Jude Bellingham for the Ballon d'Or. So, so those two end up being your top, your top, your, your, your top candidates for both of those trophies. But the reason I picked Jude Bellingham is because of what he's been capable to do, the immediate impact that he had this year with Real Madrid, the moments that he carried him throughout the season, although in the latter stages of the season, that was not the case. I mean, you could make an argument too that Vinicius in the last few matches has also been able to take that, that baton and, and push Real Madrid across the finish line proverbially. But for a great portion of the season, it was the Jude Bellingham show weekend and we got, we, we would be, sit here and talk about, hey, by the way, look what Jude Bellingham did this weekend and that the following week and the following week after that. So, so it, you have to give him the props there. And also on top of that, he has been a major contributor in terms of creation of goals, in terms of, of, of assisting in terms of goals. So, so he, he, he does end up getting it in, in, in several categories when it comes to La Liga. And, and you really have no other name or no other big name as big as Jude Bellingham right now. I mean, it's, it's not... Again, it's not me uh, minimizing uh, Vinicius Jr. It's me trying to maximize and, and really give due a Jude Bellingham that has been sensational this year. Totally understand. And of course, I don't mm -hmm. even feel one that I have a comeback for that explanation. But I do have a question and it's surrounding Robert Lewandowski, the Barcelona mm -hmm. player. I look at the list of nominees and the thing is normally Barcelona, they have a few players, not just one. But the fact that they just have one player in this nomination, Robert Lewandowski, it speaks, one, to the type of season that they had. Girona actually has two players on the list. Well, it also talks about the season Girona's had, too. Correct. So, I mean, to, going to your point. But in Lewandowski's case, the, the, the only... And now, that was my... That would have been my player to kind of snub aside if i mean you you absolutely put me against the wall and said you have to pick one i would have pricked him because recently or maybe throughout this past season in change he hasn't been the robert Lewandowski that we we're accustomed to seeing over at bayern munich now that being said last year he did win the pichichi so let's keep that in mind so with all that being said we we haven't seen a player of that ilk really come through and we haven't seen that Lewandowski really establish himself in Spanish football again is, is it because of the system maybe is it because how he's used probably so as well but he hasn't been that effective or as effective as many were expecting him to be now that's a very high bar knowing the type of player that we're dealing with yeah of course and you know this La Liga season one we got the opportunities to see some of the players that we expected to come to the forefront they didn't have the best season that we expected of them then we had some youngsters rising to the crop of the cream so we had so many different storylines and we'll continue to discuss in our upcoming shows but one i want to thank you so much as always for your time and we'll talk again soon all right talk to you later Mara. take care one giorango there our football correspondents and viewers remember la liga ea sports lives on your home of champions Oh. Oh. Manos. Oh. 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 Oh.